swine and bullshit. Welcome to Box Wine and Bullshit. Hey! This week, like every week, we will be selecting our topics from the fishbowl. So if you want your topic suggestions in the fishbowl, email them to boxwine.bs at gmail.com. Alright, Sophia. Yiggity. Ooh, yiggity. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. We are a turn today. Exactly. This has been a weird What day. you got? Childhood trauma and identity construction. That's heavy. heavy. It's heavy. Yeah, okay, it's okay. Heavy. So, when we chose these topics, we tried to think of like, what are some of the things that we care about that we could talk about um, that other people would maybe like to see that might be helpful for them. And this is one of those like a little heavier ones. Yeah, so what yeah, we were trying to get at with this is like, what can you think of that has happened to you in your past or your childhood that contributed to your sense of identity today? So it has to do with like how traumatic things influence the person that you grew into. It's about it's time. Personal. It literally is about time we do a heavy one. You're right. Who wants to go for it? Yeah. I don't. Really, uh, I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> I feel like there's two parts to it. Two parts to it, like the childhood trauma and the identity construction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. True. I mean, I feel like identity construction is not like. Uh, negative negative thing like childhood trauma that's like kind of hard to talk about yeah talk but about. there's like the there's the connection between them which is kind of the inspiration for the topic yeah you know like you got to kind of hit both mm -hmm. to really get at it true that true, that. true. so is it is it kind of like the person you are today is like because of what you went through as it's, a child it's like trying to draw connections between who you are and what you went through mm -hmm. so it's okay. not saying like one is caused directly by the other but instead saying, I can see where the shit I had to went like had to go through had made me into this person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think childhood is such a sensitive time. Like child like childhood is like a lot of your first experiences. So if you try something and somebody laughs at you or something, you know what I mean? Like something happens mm -hmm. to you, you hold on to that. Like you know what I mean? If you had really shitty holidays growing up, like every holiday you're gonna be like fuck the holidays mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying True. like you hold like I don't know what it is and that's why people I think sometimes are still so unhappy because there's things that have happened in their childhood that they're afraid that or like not afraid to let go of but it's hard to let go of right you know because those are really sensitive things and that's it's not your everyday topic you're not mm -hmm. at work at the water cooler like so uh who had a really shitty stepdad <laughs> you know what I mean True. for sure for sure Okay, so what you said, like, it did bring something up for me. Okay. That, like, you know, you have an experience and you kind of hold on to it. And especially, like, if you don't notice that you're doing it, then it can get kind of ugly. So what I was talking about is in, so in the fourth grade, all right, I was, like, I was in choir. And, like, most people were. Like, oh. almost, almost everybody in the class was in choir. It was just, like, what you did. Okay. And so there was this, um, like, choir concert that we were going to have to where there were solos. There were four solos. And, like, for the four solos, only six people, like, auditioned, right? So there were six people, four solos. So it, mean, it meant that there was, like, only two people who didn't get it, right? Mm -hmm. So I was, like, just bold and, like, out there. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to audition for this solo. Like, look at me. Go. And so I didn't get it. And it's not like I did a terrible job either. It's just that there were, there were people who were better for it. But at the time, and this, like, really stuck with me heavy through lots of other things. It was, like, I didn't get it. And I will never try again. Like, I will never let anybody see me sweat like that. Like, I got vulnerable to try for this thing. And I will not ever do that and give mm -hmm. anyone the opportunity to say no to me. Okay. And, like, there's, I can think of a, co a couple other times to where I tried and I didn't get something on the first try. And that was it. And with the singing thing, like, after that, I was kind of upset. I was, like, to my friends, I was, like, you know, I didn't get this solo, like, whatever, whatever. And, like... They, I don't think they were trying to be shitty, but they were kind of like, well, yeah, you didn't get it. Like, you suck at singing kind of thing. And, like, 
I was like, okay. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Because I thought the conversation would be like, Ashley, why haven't you sang for us? You know? <laughs> uh, but the thing but... is, like, and not everybody's a singer, right? Like, yeah. maybe I suck. Who cares, basically? And it's Definitely. fourth grade, right? <laughs> well, like, but, yeah. but, but, dude, I never sang in front of somebody else yeah. again until this year. And the only reason I can do it, even playfully, is because I made myself take singing lessons. I went to singing lessons for like four months. Wow. Because I was like, I'm about to get over this because this shit, I'm not trying to carry it anymore. So wow. the interesting thing about that That's... story to me is that like, you said that you got scarred by um, trying something once and then not wanting to continue. And some people have that personality where they're like, I'm going to try it and by all means possible, mm -hmm. I'm going to get it. True. But yet, like, you're really persistent in your endeavors now with like, video stuff and so it's like in a way like it traumatized you or whatever or it should have but like for some reason you're prevailing right now in well, your life. Well I feel like what it did is it, it kind of polarized things for me so there was like a category of okay. things I think I'm good at or I find out that I'm good mm -hmm. at from other people and then there's a category of things I don't think I'm good at or I'm just generally actually not good at and the difference the distinction is important but it doesn't show up. So for example, I happen to know that I'm good at making big ideas easy to understand. That's something mm -hmm. that I've learned through school and through people telling me. And so I can pursue my video stuff because I'm doing something I know I'm good at. I'm, mm -hmm. Like I know I'm good at. Oh, so it's like when we, okay, we have like a Musical.ly, we're gonna do Musical.ly, is that what it's called on our Instagram? Musical.ly. Actually, Ashley, on Musical.ly. Right now they're on my profile. Yeah, Ashley got us into it. So, but she will, ref you refuse to dance. No, I won't dance. I and will I'm not. Like, it's the same thing. Yeah. Right. That's <laughs> what I was gonna say. Bring up. Yeah. I don't do dance. Mm -hmm. I do. I Unless just have you to be, get. I had to be kind Unless of. Unless you get turned. A little turn. A little turn. Then you forget anyway, so who cares? Sure. Yeah. She's the only one who didn't dance in our little um, box wine and bullshit trailer. Mm. That's true. She I didn't. Was like, she was like. <laughs> like that was her dance. <laughs> she was calling Ashley. Y'all, I did dance though. When we were in the room. Oh, and like jumping yes, up yes, and down. Yes, I like, that's a lot. That's the first time, that's the first time I danced really in front of other you. people, like in a minute, so. I have something that I'm like currently dealing with. So um, there's like, okay, so people have abandonment issues, right? And I think that when like abandonment issues are said out loud, people think like someone whose parent like left them forever. But like that's not always the case according to research. <laughs> um, research, 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 research. Where are the sources at? <laughs> um, but yeah, according to research I've done and talking with like professionals and sort of, that sort of thing and reading books and I'm just really interested in like um, behavior in general. They said that it could even be like a parent like not coming to pick you up from school on time or like making you wait an hour and that could like cause mm -hmm. like some level of abandonment issues. So I don't really know where they stem from. I mean my parents are divorced and stuff but I feel like I get like clingy in <laughs> relationships sometimes because depending on the person of course but because of that. And so I've been doing some research like I said, hit with the facts. Okay, so here's this thing. There's this thing called like a codependent relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a love addict and a love um, avoidant. And a love addict is someone who grew up with a parent who was gone, and so they're constantly seeking their affection and their affirmation, but they didn't get it, so it kind of plays into like grown up life. So they're constantly like, they find someone and they're in a relationship too, and they're always like holding on tight. Then there's a love avoidant who had a parent who was too clingy, so let's say like, the other sibling or whatever, and let's say the mom was like very attached to them because the dad was away, for example. Um, this is like a common scenario. And so the mom would get really, really attached and then this kid would feel like this parent is very dependent on them for all their needs because they don't have a spouse. So they're kind of dependent on the child for like the emotional, um, their emotional needs. So then that person grows up to become a love avoidant, which is like they seek a really close intimate relationship because that's what they are familiar with in their childhood. But if that person gets too close, then they despise them and start feeling like they're clingy. So oftentimes, mm -hmm. these two people end up being attracted to each other, and it is called like a codependent relationship. So sometimes I feel like I have those tendencies, and there's different levels. Which one are you? Probably the one who's like clingy. <laughs> the love addict. Yeah. Well, not like... Yeah, like I would say I love like being around that person and with that person. 
like gimme 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 and um i but unless someone's like extremely like that to me then i'm kind of like the no one mm -hmm. so you can flip back and forth between the two depending on like the chemistry between the two people but there's also different levels it can be like extreme vers versions of this and like just like light tendencies depending mm -hmm. on the trauma and the people and whatever so i feel like sometimes that's something that i go through and when someone I'm in a relationship with draws a little bit, it like drives me crazy because I feel like I'm like abandonment issues is like death to me. Like I would rather like die. Like it feels like so painful. Mm -hmm. So that's my feel. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Did I explain that okay? No, I think you did. Sense. I kind of like I understand the concept mm -hmm. and I, I wasn't okay. super familiar with it before. It's, it's like a really sad. common thing. Like so many people go through it. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people can probably relate. So... I mean, just to like bring up stereotypes, which what better to operate from? So like, of the people who identify as some brand of queer-ish, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I guess um, I'll that one, the question that would come up, obviously, is like, who has daddy issues? I do. I, do. I hella do. Yeah, I hella, I hella, hella do. Issues. I think we, we all, all have daddy issues. Yeah. I hella do. Who did? Put a comment below if you don't have daddy issues. For real. Yeah. Hey, and then shout and out to you if you. And you shout know. out to you, daddy. Like, yeah. shout out to you, daddy. If you don't have daddy issues, shout out to you, yeah, daddy. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, one time for the one time. Who has yeah. mommy issues? I might see. I mean, I got some semi mommy I got, issues. I love my mom. I mean, yeah. my mom got problems. Everybody's mom got problems. True. But like, my mom, she's the homie. My mom's yeah. punkin' for sure. Mm -hmm. My mommy's punkin'. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> wow, so what about you? You you're close with your mom? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we all close with our mom. We all got beef with our dad. Mm, I wouldn't say I like I'm call close with my mom. Like you wouldn't call it beef. You wouldn't say you're close. Elaborate. <laughs> Go on. You elaborate. Okay. Um. So the only reason I wouldn't like I say we're close in certain aspects. Mm -hmm. Like we can be cool as long as we're not talking about certain things mm. so if we're talking about my queer-ish moments we're not cool oh, okay. and that's a main part of my identity right sure. so then it comes up that eliminates a part of our coolness mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so so yeah I, I would probably i think that i definitely have fallouts with my mom but overall like she's given everything for me to be like mm -hmm. successful so shout out to mom um but yeah i don't know my dad wasn't around like all the time but now that i am like graduated college and like basically like successful whatever like he's kind of like way more there so huh. i still appreciate him and stuff but i kind of there's definitely i f kind of feel like he's like a, like an uncle sometimes more than a dad even though like I, you think he's at arm's length kind of thing yeah but recently he's been like a lot more there wow yeah that's kind of me too like i don't know what it is like me and my dad when I was growing up we always like we never really got along really well and I feel like now that I graduated and stuff like now it's like I don't know I feel like the relationship has shifted a little mm, bit I feel really? like I feel like he like I, I can see effort that like he's like yeah. texting me like hey like how did this go right. or oh, whatever and I'm like you're like okay what? dad you're like what? What? No. I see. yeah so I don't know I've always wanted to be like daddy's princess you know what I mean like in the movies mm -hmm. or like you know I, I was in a Girl Scout troop and I would always see like the girls with, that were really close to their dads and like I like never really like felt like that you know and also because like I'm not really into sports. Did and you live stuff. with him? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did you? Oh no, that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Why don't you feel like you were as close, like emotionally distant? Um, one I think it's our signs. Cause I'm a Taurus and oh, I forget what he is. Uh, I, think he's a, I think he's like a Sagittarius. When's his birthday? December third. Yeah, he's a side. So that's a day before my birthday. Okay, I'll see you December fourth. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. We talked about that. Uh -huh. But yeah, I think it's like the signs, and I think like I don't know, like I'm very like I'm gonna say and do what I want regardless of what you think, kind of thing. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think it's probably that's hard. That's for, I think it's hard for a dad to like see their daughter just kind of like do whatever she wants. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's a sign thing. I don't know. Or I don't. I literally don't know what it is, mm. but we just always would bump heads on, like, literally everything. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just such a realist, and I mean, like, I guess I'm a realist too, but, like, I'm like, well, well, I don't know, I think we just have such different views, mm -hmm. you know? Sense. Like, such different views on things, and, like, um, I always kind of felt like there was, a, like, a little bit of a race barrier between us, even yeah, though, because he's, he, he's white. We both have white daddies. And so, like, because he's white, like, sometimes, like, when we do talk, I mean, like, we had a lot of race talks when I, when I was growing up. We had mm -hmm. talked about race a lot, me and my dad. 
And then, like, sometimes, like, when I would talk about white privilege and stuff, he gets, like, so angry because he doesn't, like, yeah. yeah, or he gets it, but he's like, well, like, you know, I'm from lower class and I had to, like, bust my ass all my life. And I'm like, okay, well, I get that, but, you know, so, like, just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like he thinks that, like, I hate being half white or something, mm -hmm. you know, and I think he also thinks that I hate men. So, are your parents together? Yeah. That is, like, relatively uncommon. Like, my parents aren't together. Mine are in it. Mm. No. Yeah. Wow, cheers to your parents and their mix, and yeah. they're biracial. I literally don't know how it works. I mean, like, I'm not saying, like, what's but going I on there. I literally don't know But how I'm it just works. like, how does that, how does it work? I don't know. <coughs> but Were your parents married? Mine were. Yeah? My mom married my dad because she was pregnant with me. I mean, um, I don't, okay, I'm, I'm going to use the word because kind of lightly because I'm not my mom. I don't know why because she married him. Right. But she found out she was pregnant and then they got married. Like, okay. And I actually didn't know that until I was like 13. Mm. When I was 13, I was like, wait, mm, when did y'all get married again? Because sometimes she would be like, oh, it's your your father and I's like anniversary. It would have been whatever. Mm. And it was like, it's something like November or something. Right. And like, it took me till I was 13 to be able to do the math. I'm like, you know what? I was born in April. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not quite, um, that's not quite nine months. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't even know it was the year before. No, because she told me. I'm like, what year? Oh. She's like, oh, 91. I'm like, oh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so yeah, there was that whole like, wait, I was a, like, a mistake, which is actually so interesting. Mm -hmm. Like that connotation of what is a mistake? Mm -hmm. Like if your pregnancy was unplanned, like, how do you feel about that? Do you know? Like was yours planned? I don't know. You don't well, know I'm yours? actually almost positive that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Just because of, they were never married mm -hmm. and like, that's something that my mom would have wanted. Right. And, like, um, they never got married. My dad is a baby maker. So, he has, he has a whole bunch of them out there. Shout wow. out to all the siblings. What, one time for the one time one with time the siblings. For time. I, don't, I don't know that it was on purpose. Yeah, they were married, um, and then they had us, like, a year or two later, I think. And we were planned, but I didn't know we were planned until recently because my mom, would, she's like such a jokester. So she'd always be like, your nickname's mistake and your nickname's accident, like my brother and I. And we just always would like laugh so hard. And I always just assumed that was real. But like I found out that like we were like deliberate, like they wanted to have us for a reason because my grandpa was going to pass away and they wanted me to have a sibling. Hmm. So okay. I don't think it really makes a difference. Like, because I thought for this whole time that I was a mistake or whatever, an accident. And my perception, I don't feel like, has really changed because of that. What about you? Were you, like, you and your sister, were you planned? Or was it just, like, we're married and now we have kids kind of thing? Um, I think, yeah. I'm pretty sure I was planned. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, like, the firstborn. Yeah. Me my, too. And Me my too. sister, I think my sister not was not. <laughs> I think your sister was unplanned. Um, Yo, my brother yeah. was unplanned too. Like, I and mean, they were married. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. I mean, like, yeah, I don't think that they were like trying. I think it just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Brooke. <laughs> hey, Brooke. Hey, Brooke. What's up? Yeah, I'm like, cause my, I wrote a poem once. Like, when I feel something strong, I write poems. And the poem was about how, like, it was about the moment that I had the conversation with my mom where I found out that like they got married after they knew I was coming. Hmm. And one of the things about it is, like, my dad was, like, my father was, like, pretty, like, shitty. Like, especially to my mom, but also kind of in general. Mm -hmm. And so the poem was about, like, feeling like I kind of had to shoulder the burden of the fact that she stayed with him. Mm -hmm. Like, you married him because you thought that was right because I was coming. And now, all of a sudden, I have to carry the fact that you stayed with this person who damaged you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, that yeah. was... Oh, it was a lot, kind of, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's, like, that's where it that's comes from I mean. for me. Not so much being, like, an accident. I, don't, I mean, I don't really care about that for that sake. Mm -hmm. But the whole, like, okay, you married this man who went on to harm you and me and my brother and everyone mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And, like, how much of that was influenced by the fact that I was coming, you know? Right. Like, like I said before in the beginning of the video, I think whatever happens in your childhood, like, stays with you. You know, like, if you didn't have enough food to eat growing up, you may be, like, freaking out that, you know, you don't have food to put on the table. Or if you, you know, always got made fun of for the clothes that you had when you were young because, you know, your parents could afford, couldn't afford to, like, buy you Jordans or whatever, then you might be really materialistic. Mm, right. You know, just, I mean, like, childhood is yeah. such a fragile time. That like, it's a really fun time, you know, because you're a kid. 
you know, they say have fun, just be a kid. But, like, literally, I think anything that happens in your childhood, it, yeah. it stays with you. You know what I'm saying? That's like, it true. really, really stays with you. Mm -hmm. Like, in elementary school, like, I, well, I've been overweight, like, all my life, you know? In, in elementary school, I used to get called fat, ugly, like, all these names, you know what I mean? And it stays with you, you know? So then when someone does tell you that you're beautiful or you're pretty, it's kind of, like, hard to believe them because mm -hmm. for so long you believed whatever the haters on the playground were saying, mm -hmm. you know? I've been called fat when I was little, too. I remember, like, being on the couch in my neighbor's house and we had a huge dinner, and uh, my neighbors were from Chile. <laughs> Chile. Chile, am I saying that right? Um, and then the two girls were like my age or a little older, and I was like chilling on the couch with like a huge ass belly poking food out. Baby. Yeah, food baby, and I was like, oh, this food was so good. And the girl came up to me, like lifted my shirt up, and like poked my belly, and she's like, you're fat. And I, in the moment, I think I just laughed, but then like, my brain was like replaying that shit yeah. over and over for like years. Like I right. still remember that, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah. it's like the stupidest little thing. Like kids are stupid. But mm -hmm. okay, so is. maybe as like a closing, what we can kind of do is we can say, like, what did people, whoever it was, your parents or your friends or your siblings or whatever, what did they say to you or about you as a kid that you see that like shows up now that you wrestle with? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like pick something and be like, you know what? I still deal with that. No, I'm okay. good. Wow, that's so random. That's like, I just can't. You're in a safe place. Because you're with friends. God, like, you can it. actually feel that. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, Sophia, if you don't want to go that deep, girlfriend, don't Fuck, I just can't think of anything that's like not like so fucking traumatizing. I'm trying to think of like light, like deep stuff. Well, you don't have to do that. Yeah, you you just say what's real for you. Damn, but. Or say nothing. You can pass. You can yeah. pass. I like that bitch. It's like. Pass. No, that's no, fine. Be that's her. Not, yeah. yeah. Literally be her. No. Because Literally be, be her. Yeah. Or if it feels comfortable to you, we can like skip around. You don't have to go second. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or we can even start over there if you I just want don't to. know why I feel so ashamed of calling my parent out. You know? I think it's hard because it's like, you're, I feel like this part is juicy. And it could be, I love them so much. It's hard because it's like, you know, we're older now, you know what I mean? And when you're a parent, there's no instruction manual, like, this is how I should wait, raise my child. Exactly. Hella, hella. Exactly. This is exactly. how I should raise Especially my your first queer, queer biracial mm -hmm. child Me too. in America. And that matters. You know? And you know what else, too? Like, my mom... Them. My mom was 23 when she had me. I'm 24. Mm -hmm. Like how I'm not gonna about, I'm not about to stand right here and act like I know what I could have done. Exactly. Like yeah, okay, right she made mistakes. mistakes. She absolutely did. Mm -hmm. And she's been a fantastic parent. Like people make mistakes, you know. And like I, I mean, I'm me, so I call her out right to her face, and that's what it is. But like, the, not everybody's like that. Like yeah. they did a good job. Obviously, you're the woman you are. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean. Yeah. So like, why would you want to like take stabs? That that makes sense. I think I think it's also really. And hard it's to not talk about taking stabs. It's not. Yeah, it's not. It it's just for the. Like it's like it. to I guess get more vulnerable. To be open, you know. Yeah. And it's hard to be vulnerable, like. Especially that's that's why I haven't shared a story. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can be funny vulnerable about like sexual shit, but when it gets like real vulnerable, like that's like a whole different That's like level. different. I know oh, that. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Childhood I feel like I have my switch. Really? Mm -hmm. Being vulnerable, like I can get there, not too mm -hmm. bad. But being like mm. playful, funny about sexual shit, I'm like, nah. Wow. Mm -mm. That's mm -hmm. so interesting. I guess as soon as it comes to talking about it, I'm like, oh god. I feel like I can just like feel like get my little turtle shell. Mm. So I wish I could think of anything. I feel like I'm like, come on, give me something. Give me something. You're chilling. Yeah. Why don't you start? Because we know you we, you're good. Okay. I'm going off one day. So. Okay, go ahead. Alright, so I feel like I'm the complete opposite of what you two said you were feeling like throughout your childhood. Um so people would call me skinny a lot mm -hmm. instead of being fat, right? So I feel like most times I would go home feeling like I wasn't the right size. Like mm. for some reason I needed to be bigger. Mm. And I didn't do anything about it. I wasn't like I was trying to like, eat more or anything. Until I got to high school, I would be like, okay, maybe like maybe I'm a little bit small. And my arms like were the smallest arm like when we were just checking each other's arms, I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I'm small. <laughs> I was like, I already know. But like I went through this little phase where I was like Mom, I probably need to eat some more or like do something to get my arms bigger because it's hot, it's summer, I'm not trying to cover them up. And she was like, no, you're fine because I was like skinny when I was little too. And I was like, but I'm not little anymore. <laughs> like, I'm in high school. But basically, I was trying to do stuff like 
drink protein shakes or like wow. do certain things and then I was like, okay, well it's not working, so I'll probably be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and now I'm fine. Like now I'm very like, I'm okay with it, you know, but I do find myself checking for who I'm with, like in a relationship and how their body matches with mine. So like, I, mm -hmm. I try not to date people that are over like a certain size. Because you don't want them to feel like... What? Because I don't want them to feel uncomfortable because I'm so small, and I don't want them to feel uncomfortable that they're so big. I'm like, mm. and I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I'm really attracted to like huge people. Mm -hmm. But like at the same time, if there's somebody that is attractive and I'm like, oh, you're you're kind of big, then I'll think twice about it. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, mm, what? maybe people maybe not height. That's interesting. Even with height, I'll do mm -hmm. it with height too. Because you're basically saying you measure it against you, and then you kind of make a decision that way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I still struggle. For me, it's like, the one I'm thinking of right now is that when I was a kid, people would always tell me that I looked like my parents. They, I heard both. Like, you look like your mom, you look like your father, whatever. And I just, like, wasn't really here for it. Like, especially the, like, you look like your father thing. It was just, like, a little much. As I mentioned, he wasn't, like, my favorite person. He, right. he didn't do a great job in lots of different instances. So this idea that, like, it kind of, it kind of, like, started to plague me that I was, not that I came from them, but that I resembled that. It just was like too much, okay. kind of. And so I feel like for a long time, I would do things for the sole reason that it distinguished me from my parents. Mm -hmm. Like neither of my parents would ever do this. Or like, I don't look like them now, right? Like, so I don't look like my mom now that I have short hair. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's something that I, that did occur to me. Or like, I don't look like my father because my features are feminine. Like I, and it goes both and it's like not, and with my mom, it's not like she ever did anything. It was just like looking like them was kind of more than I could deal with because I was struggling so hard to figure out who I was. Mm -hmm. So resembling somebody else, it, it put like a, a setback on that for me. I think I have one. Okay. Um, so I think that like my dad always like idealizing like super like real thin women and um like being half black like i just don't have that body shape like i have an s and i have like you she know does. like more athletic she do she does you got that ad though they're vouching for me no um because like my mom's like from africa and her body type is like athletic like african women's bodies so like that's what my body type is and now i really appreciate it but like i didn't understand that before when i was growing up and so that was hard for me to hear, like my dad, like always talking about, um, like beautiful, thin, like white women, mm -hmm. you know, and like really always admiring that. And, um, like, you know, if I was eating, like being like bread's the devil, <laughs> like, and that sort of shit, Whoa. like that, I think definitely stuck with me. Cause now every time I like reach for bread, like I have that little like echo and like we were saying, like no parents are like perfect. So it's not like crazy but that definitely sometimes sticks in my head yeah the fat thing was like such a problem for me growing up just like I don't even like using that word mm -hmm. because it's like it hurts you know mm -hmm. but um I remember when I was 13 hip-hop abs had just came out y'all know what I'm talking about with yeah. so I had the videos hip-hop abs and I was like all right like let me try and get kind of right this summer you know I was like 13 so I was like doing hip-hop abs and I was like you know yeah, I started young. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, starting to feel really good about myself. And then um, I guess like the dog had made a mess downstairs or something. I don't know. And then, but my, my dad was downstairs and he didn't know that was like the dog that did it. He thought it was me or whatever. And he had told my sister, well, Catherine better get her fat ass down here and pick it up, right? But I wasn't there for that, right? I wasn't there for that. I'm in the bathroom. My sister comes and tells me later. She's like, hey, um, so this is what was said earlier. So like, and I was like, yeah, right, like, that's not funny, like, don't play. And she's like, no, like, he really said that. So my feelings were, like, crushed. I was like, mm -hmm. here it is, I'm trying to do hip-hop abs, I'm trying to oh, get it right. That and hurts, it physically it hurts. hurts. <laughs> it hurts. So Y'all, it hurts today. My feelings were so hurt. Like, I remember I was just in the bathroom, like, tears. Like, I was just like, what, like, 
you know, this is my dad, like, why, That's sad. you know what I mean? And then I think, like, a few days had gone by where I just kind of wasn't talking to him, and I think he had found out, like, you know, my sister was like, I told her what you said, and then he came to me, and he apologized, he's like, I'm really sorry, like, you know, I didn't mean it, whatever, whatever, you know, and so, you know, we reconciled and made up, but, like, and I mean, like, you know, maybe he was just saying that because he was mad, or, like, because he thought I made the mess, or whatever, you know, and you, you say things when you're angry that you don't mean, or maybe you do mean it, or whatever, but, um, I mean, I think obviously he could tell that it hurt my feelings and right. because he could see that it hurt me, it hurt him, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, Dang. yeah, I mean, but yeah, that was like thir 13, 2007, LOL. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. you remember it like that. Yeah. You know, like, abs. like all of us, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. stuff, you remember yeah. stuff that happens. <sighs> Can I do a different one? So it's about race, so add some diversity. Sure. Um, I remember this time when I was in the car with my dad. And I would always want to listen to the hip hop radio station oh, he's, oh. in elementary school, and he used to hate it because my dad's white. <laughs> Not because my dad's white, but I mean, Just like, a yeah, story. yeah, and I um, relate to that. Yeah, sure. and he'd be like, if they say one cuss word, we're changing the channel, like you know, dad stuff. And so um, I remember we had to change the channel. We pull up next to this car of like black people. And I look over and I'm like, yes! And him and my mom aren't together, so I like love all things black culture. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I was with them. Like they're having the time of their life. Their music is bumping, their windows are down. They're just like having a good time. They're probably college students. And my dad like rolls up his window and he goes, and he's like, God, like those type of people in their hip hop music and their loud music. And I was like, what do you mean those type of people? And just, I forget specifically Ugh. what he said, but it was hinted at like race. And I just remember thinking like, but that's like me, that's me. Right. you know? And so I don't think that he like connected that. And so that always made, that's probably why I bump my music really loud. I don't know, but that kind of- Just stick it to him. I don't know, but I mean, it's kind of like an old people thing to say too. Like, oh, those kids and their yeah, loud yeah. fucking music. But, like, I remember it being directly related to race of, like, how it was framed. And you don't forget that. Like, you're no, saying you really yeah. don't. Childhood is, it's, it's like, that's why I'm so afraid to have kids. Because it's like, you yeah. say one thing that, like, you know, yes. you're, you know what I mean? You say one thing, you do one thing, you try to, you know, make their birthday party great. It actually turns out really shitty or something. And they remember it. Yeah. You know? And they're like a drug addict. They're little people. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Right for it. But I definitely think it like shapes you into the who you are as an adult. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So we got really real this week. Okay. But hey, it was about time we got really real. The bullshit of the week was childhood trauma, okay? It was yes. about to get real. And identity construction. And identity construction. Like how did that turn into who we are? But look, the bottom line of all of this, just to like put a positive takeaway for y'all, is every single one of these people is a bomb ass person who's successful, who's driven, who has passion, who's living their lives, we're well adjusted, we're adults, like we're doing okay. So like all this shit happened and it sucks and you carry it. And I would literally go to bat for every single one of these people that like we're out here doing it. We're doing the right thing. Hey. So it comes out. It's okay. It's okay. So you know, if you're still like doing the childhood trauma thing, like everyone's doing childhood trauma. Yeah. Because like it's impossible to go throughout life and not have something from your childhood bother you. And if you say no, like then you haven't really looked. Mm, yeah. I'm just saying. Because you know it's easy I mean? to push it to the it's side. Not, it's so easy. Easy. The question mm -hmm. is not do you have childhood trauma, but what is your childhood and trauma? And where is it? And what's it doing to yeah. you? How are you doing? Because we're fucking human. We could, there's no such thing as a perfect childhood. Mm -hmm. Some are way better than the others. And yeah. God bless you if you have a shitty childhood, like a really bad one. Like. And I mean, this this video is not to say like, oh, F all the parents out there who aren't sure. doing good. Yeah. You know, like we, we, were, we were talking about before, parenting doesn't come with an instruction manual. You don't always know what to do or what to say mm -hmm. exactly. but if you are a parent you know like take everything that we said tonight and take that into consideration with your kids and do your best to be the best parent you can be hey you know what and shout out to all the parents yeah and to our parents because we're yeah. fucking here so they did yeah. something right yeah. so cheers to that yeah. <laughs> thank you for watching and we'll be back next week with another episode of box wine and bullshit box hey. wine and bullshit hey